So this is the final version of my DIY canister filter. The design is very similar to the one I did for the proof of concept. The only true difference really is the actual canister itself. Uh, I put a link down below in the description to the proof of concept and it kind of it's a longer video that kind of goes through a lot of the details on this particular build. The only difference is, like I said, I used a different, a different container. The container in the proof of concept video was a clear plastic uh, canister that I got from Walmart. It was a mainstays canister. I like that form factor better just because it was smaller. And as I mentioned in that video, this um, canister filter is going to be put on my, sir, my son's uh, turtle tank. Uh, so the canister is going to be in his room. So I did want something that was small that I can tuck out of the way so him and his little brother are not as tempted to tamper with it or accidentally knock it over or just do, you know, things that kids do to stuff that they shouldn't be um, messing with. There was one major flaw with that design. Um, in that video, you'll notice I did have a leak at the bottom and I'm pretty sure I was going to be able to take care of that with... Um, with some silicone or some um, some plumber's tape. But the major problem was it, if, you, if the pump got turned off, the cap leaked. Um, when, this, when the system was running, I didn't have any issues at all. Uh, it worked great. I just had that one little leak, which I, like I said, I could have um, taken care of. But when you turn the pump off, the water still was being siphoned into the container. And I guess it stretched the container out and it started to leak from the, um, from, from the lid. That, uh, being that we live in Florida, that would probably end up being a really big problem. I may have that similar problem on this lid, um, but it seems not to be as big of a deal because this is actually made for water, whereas the other container was just something I picked up um, just for testing purposes. Um, the actual design of this came from DIY Aquapros. This is basically the exact same design with the, diff with the only exception is the actual canister itself. The canister that Mike used in his uh, video was a two gallon uh, Coleman jug. The nice thing about his, it, it had a pre-drilled hole for the actual um, spout for the ball valve. This was already pre-drilled. Pre um, in mine, I had to drill it. Um, one thing I didn't uh, take into account was the distance between the outside of the outside wall and the inside wall. Um, being this is an insulated container, it is probably about an inch, probably about a half inch to three quarter inch uh, gap. Uh, so I kind of had a little bit of a leak at the bottom, but it, as you can see, maybe on video, I put a lot of silicone on there and it actually took care of it. I put the silicone on the inside and the outside and it was a real tiny leak, but now it doesn't leak at all. Um, what you see down there uh, is basically a PVC connector. It's slipped on one side and threaded on the other. It's a half inch connector. And I just use that basically as a nut to um, connect the ball valve. The, so the ball valve is connected to a, a half inch riser. And then that riser is connected to this slip. I could not find a nylon or plastic nut. So I used this uh, PVC connector and that little brownish thing in there or just a grommet um, that helps um, you know keep it watertight. The lid is the standard lid that came with the Coleman jug. Uh, nice thing about this is that it is waterproof. Um, I basically drilled a three-quarter inch hole into the top of the lid and I screwed in my um, hose connector um, and then connected that to a uh, PVC hose. So now that I moved the canister filter back into my son's room, I went ahead and hooked it up to the power head. The pump that I'm using is an Eco 396. You can pick it up on Amazon for around $23. I believe it's rated at 396 gallons per hour, which is extreme overkill for his tank. But as his turtles get bigger, I know I'm going to have to upgrade the tank. So this should at least future-proof this build. Um, I connected the ball valve to the power head using this four-inch half, this four-inch flex riser. And I guess the reason for that is that it allows the pump to sort of move around a little bit and it's just not super um, rigid. 
Um, right now, I have pot scrubbers in the bottom of the in the bottom of the canister. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the activated carbon. Then I'm gonna drop in the ceramic rings. Next, fill it with some bio balls. Oops. The polyfill. And I cut the filter padding to meet to match the diameter of the of the filter. Um, I don't know if that's the correct order that this stuff should go in. Um, so if anyone objects to that or has a better idea, definitely leave a comment um, down below. This is just what I had seen being done. So I went with um, with that combination. So I filled the canister up using a gravel vacuum and tightened on the lid. The reason I did it this way is I figured that the container should create a vacuum and start sucking water out of the tank once I kick on the pump. That way I don't have to manually create a siphon and get that nasty turtle poop water in my mouth. Um, so I'm going to attempt to do this by one hand. I'm going to attempt to cut on the filter or cut on the um, power head and then open the ball valve. So power head is on. Ball valve has been opened up. And what should happen, uh, I know it's kind of hard to see, but the water should now start pulling out of the tank, which it is. So it's pulling out of the tank and it's being siphoned down into the container. Then it's going through the power head and then back up into the tank. Um, it's getting really good water flow. So I'm extremely happy with, with that. Um, as I mentioned in the proof of concept video, again, this is for my son's room. So I have this little extension piece on there so it actually goes in below the water. So it's not going to make as much noise when he's sleeping because I could already hear him. Daddy, daddy, I can't sleep. It's too noisy. So to mitigate that, again, I added this little extension piece on here um, and it just pushes it down below the water level. So there you have it. Like I said, getting really good water flow. I'm gonna let the system run for about 10, 10 minutes and kind of examine it again and just kind of see if I have any leaks anywhere. Um, this is the first time I'm really testing it once since I've siliconed everything. Um, so we'll see. So the system has been running for about three and a half hours or so and so far so good. Um, I have some good news and I have some bad news. The good news is, uh, is it's not leaking. It seems to be working as expected. The area around the pump and the bottom of the canister are dry, so leaks so far have not been a problem. The issue I did run into is kind of an odd one. I guess it's sort of to be expected. Now that there's media in the actual canister, I think the water is flowing in at a lesser um, pace than it's being sucked out. Um, so right before I started filming, um, it kind of sounded like it was gasping. I hear a lot of air. I was actually seeing air bubbles in the, um, in the line as well. So when I picked up the canister, it was sort of light, uh, which leads me to believe, you know, the water is just coming out quicker than it's being pumped into the that has been sucked into the canister. So to help mitigate that, I just uh, turned the valve, um, closed it a little bit um, to just uh, restrict the flow of water coming out of the, um, to restrict the flow of water coming out of the, uh, the canister. And that seemed to have helped. I guess that's gonna end up being a, a bit of trial and error over time to figure out what's the correct flow um, there's no real way for me to gauge it. Um, I will just have to try it and just kind of see that the um, the canister is not um, either overflowing or it's not being sucked em emptied out too quickly. So I guess that'll be my next task. Um, unfortunately, this doesn't. This is not a see-through container, kind of like the one I did in the in the proof of concept. So I can't really tell. I'll just have to sort of you know, shake it around and kind of gauge where the water is at at any given time. So 
I would consider this a success. So I made another modification to the lid of the canister filter. Instead of having the um, hose connector directly connected to the lid, I went ahead and added this quick release um, system here. And the reason being, this is a screw off lid, so it's a little bit of a pain to get it off. And I ended up end up having to keep on messing with the with the tube. So to kind of help with that. Um, I just have this quick release. It's a, from the garden section at Lowe's. It's what you use to, to connect a, a hose. It's basically a quick release garden hose. And so there's a little piece in here. I pull this down and this just disconnects. And in order to get it to work, I just got a 3 4th to half inch reducer on both ends. So the 3 4th uh, connects to the quick release valve. And then the half inch connects to a, another half inch riser. Here and then on this side, I have the actual um, tube, the actual the actual tube connector, hose connector. So that seems to work fine. I don't see any leaks in there at this point, um, and it should make cleaning the uh, filter a lot easier because I will just push this down, pop off the hose, and then I can actually open the lid without having to um, disconnect the hose from the hose connector, which could be a little bit of a pain. Oh, so. Well, there you have it. The system's been running for about a week now, and I'm happy with the overall results. These are just some random clips and photos that I've strung together just to show the water quality. And overall, it's good. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, the turtles seem to be happy. I'm happy. The feeder fish are happy. Well, I guess for right now they're happy. Everything, everything looks good. Um, just uh, happy with the overall results. These are the turtles. Leo and Mikey. Leo is the little guy. And Mikey is the big one. My son named them, of course, after the Ninja Turtles. So I suppose we need to get two more to round out the quartet. <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.